In the early post-war years, tensions between England and Germany remained high. Therefore, a German player becoming a hero at an English club seemed highly unlikely, but Bert Troutman defied the odds. After spending time in England as a prisoner of war, Troutman signed for Manchester City, and whilst there was initially huge opposition to his signing, he eventually won over the fans, and was also involved in one of the bravest acts in football history. This is the story of Bert Troutman, sold at to Shotstopper. Bert Troutman was born in Bremen on the 22nd of October 1923. He showed great athletic ability from a young age, and after joining the Hit the Youth, he was awarded a Certificate for Athletic Excellence, signed by German President Paul von Hindenburg. He worked as a mechanic at the start of the Second World War, before joining the Luftwaffe as a radio operator, and he was then deployed to the Eastern Front as a paratrooper. He would be promoted to corporal and then sergeant in his time there, as well as winning five medals for his actions, which included a first-class Iron Cross. Towards the end of the war, he was captured, as well as only 90 survivors from his regiment of around 1,000, and he ended up as a prisoner of war camp near Cheshire. Football matches would often take place at the camp, and Troutman initially played outfield. However, during one game, he was injured, and decided to switch positions with the goalkeeper, a position Troutman would end up sticking with. Troutman would spend time working as a farmhand and a bomb disposal expert near the camp, and when offered repatriation to Germany, he turned it down, and decided to stay in England. Troutman's footballing ability had not gone unnoticed, and in 1948 he joined St. Helens Town, where he would meet his future wife, Margaret Fryer, the daughter of the club secretary. Troutman impressed with St. Helens, and his performances helped to draw high attendances for the club. He helped the club gain promotion, and among those turning up to watch him play were scouts. Legendary Manchester City goalkeeper Frank Swift retired in 1949, and so the Sky Blues were in search of a replacement. Manchester City offered Troutman a contract, which he accepted. However, many of the City faithful were not happy. With post-war tensions still high, many fans did not want to see a man who had fought for the Nazis representing their club, and many season ticket holders threatened a boycott. However, Manchester City captain Eric Westwood decided to make a statement. Westwood had fought on the beaches of Normandy, but he declared, there is no war in this dressing room. Alexander Altman, Manchester's community rabbi, also pleaded with the supporters to give Troutman a chance, saying that the crimes the Germans had committed were not the fault of the goalkeeper. Troutman would soon play for City, but it did not get off to a good start. He was often booed by opposition fans, especially in areas that had been heavily affected by the Blitz. When City travelled to Craven Cottage, it was Troutman's first visit to London. He was dealt with heckles of Kraut and Nazi. Fulham were expected to thrash the struggling Man City, but a series of great saves by Troutman saw him receive a standing ovation, and he was applauded off the pitch by both sets of players. Over the next few years, Troutman established himself as one of the best goalkeepers in the country, and even had a chance to return home when Schalke made a bid of £1,000 for him. However, the bid was rejected, with Man City saying he was worth 20 times that fee. His style of play was also ahead of its time, as rather than kicking the ball upfield as other goalkeepers would do, Troutman would instead throw the ball to the wingers to start a counter-attack. In 1955, Troutman would become the first German to play in an FA Cup final. However, he would lose out this time, with Newcastle winning 3-1. The next year though, City would be at Wembley again, and this time, Troutman had the chance to go one better. Manchester City faced Birmingham City at Wembley. Man City took the lead in only the third minute, and although Birmingham levelled two goals in two minutes around the hour mark, saw Manchester City lead by three goals to one. Troutman was on the verge of glory, but he was soon involved in an accident that would define his career. With 17 minutes to go, Birmingham striker Peter Murphy was played through on goal. Troutman dived at Murphy's feet for the ball, and was hit in the neck by Murphy's right knee. Medical staff rushed onto the pitch to check on him. Troutman was dazed and in a lot of pain, but with substitutes not yet being introduced, he would have to carry on. City held on to their lead, and Troutman was an FA Cup winner. 
He climbed the Wembley steps to collect his winner's medal, where Prince Philip remarked how crooked the goalkeeper's neck appeared to be. Troutman went to the club banquet that night, and expected his pain to heal with rest. When it didn't subside, he went to a hospital the next day, where he was told that he was fine. However, a few days later, still in pain, he got a second opinion from Manchester Royal Infirmary, who told him that he had dislocated five vertebrae, and the injury had almost cost him his life. Troutman spent a long time recovering, and whilst doing so, he was hit by tragedy. His firstborn son, John, was killed in a car accident at the age of just five. Troutman said that his wife Margaret never recovered from the tragedy, and when she died in 1980, he said it was because of a broken heart. Troutman would eventually return from injury, but he never looked like the same player from before, and in the 57-58 season, Manchester City conceded 100 goals, with a number of heavy defeats. In 1964, Troutman would leave Manchester City, but first, he had a testimonial, which included the likes of Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law, Tom Finney, Stanley Matthews, and Jimmy Armfield, and the game reportedly attracted around 60,000 spectators. He played a few games for Wellington, but after receiving a red card, he never played for them or any club ever again. Troutman never played internationally, due to being based in England, but after retiring from playing, he gave coaching a go. Starting off at Stockport County, he became something of a journeyman coach. After spells managing teams in Germany, he was asked by the German FA to help develop football in countries lacking of footballing infrastructure. This role saw him have spells managing the national teams of Burma, Tanzania, Liberia, Pakistan, and North Yemen. He was also awarded an OBE for his role in developing Anglo-German relations in 2004. Bert Troutman died on the 19th of July 2013, at the age of 89. Many tributes were paid to him upon his passing, with goalkeepers such as Bob Wilson and Joe Corrigan describing him as one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time. Bert Troutman was a pioneer for footballers. He overcame the hatred he was initially presented with to end up becoming adored by the Manchester City fans, making a grand total of 545 appearances for the club. He bravely fought on in the cup final, having faced an injury that could have killed him, a moment of courage that is unlikely to ever be replicated in an age of diving and simulation. Troutman serves as a vital figure in football history, rising above the hatred to become a legend of the game, and through doing this, and helping Manchester City win the FA Cup with a broken neck, he will forever be known as one of the greatest goalkeepers in the history of the English game.